Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to this week webinar, which I normally do once a week. If I can, I'll try my best. Once in a while, I don't get to do it. Let me thank you for coming very early. So let's go. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today is the yen pairs. So let's start with the yen pairs. But since it was non-farm payroll, which I actually totally missed that it was non-farm payroll today, it's only after I schedule it then I realize it's non-farm payroll. We would look at the majors. Let's look, take a very fast look at the majors and what they're doing and what we expected of them. So we're still within this structure. This pullback wasn't a surprise for us. We anticipated that once we broke the structure. Well, we never anticipated such a fast move. These fast moves happen just because of the news event, but the, the structurally we were looking for downside here. Right now we have got this. I think this, this is not a change of direction. This is a pullback to continue to the upside because we are actually correcting this impulse to the upside, as you can see, right? And don't let that fool you as if it's a very big pullback because look what happened here previously when they went up. They made a very deep pullback. They went up. They made a very deep pullback, but they still went up. So this pullback would eventually correct itself back up. Maybe we get a second one. Maybe we repeat this very same structure here. Not that we should, but it's very possible. That is not the start of the downside. If it is going to go anywhere more down than that, what you probably want to wait for is wait for a correction and then sell. Because if you don't get a correction, what you get is a reversal. Right? So be careful. Euro, definitely, we could go and test the stop. We talked about that in our webinar this morning. I've been posting this chart for a while that they may retest that top. The reason I think euro is going to move faster than the dollar index, dollar index going down, euro going up, it could go faster than the dollar index, and we may see a retest of this top, right? That would complete the A, B, C pattern, right? Because this is an A, B, C pattern, this one may just make sideways, come back down, break here before they go. That is a possibility. So I think this is an ABC pattern here. We may make an ABC here and then we go back up. So this up move may just come to anywhere about 50%, 618, and then we see one more down move before they go. I don't think this is the one going to take out the top. So it's going up very fast. Don't jump in, never jump in at the top of a candle. You're likely going to regret it because they will be pulled back if it's going to continue to go up. They will pull back. Maybe the whole of next week we'll get downside and then we get more upside. If it is not going up, you will get a reversal. Right? So don't jump in the candle today is the, and don't try to think it is going to go all the way all the time because this may be all you have. Next 20, 30 pips you could go, but that's not worth the risk. Right? Pong, pretty much we anticipated this upside because we're looking for a correction of this move up and you got a one, two, three. I'm definitely looking for Pong sell. So, for me, any any indication of weakness at the top here around the 50 or the 618, I'm looking for a sell setup and the pound to the downside, right? So I would like it to go up some more. I would like it to probably start making smaller structures like this going up somewhere here. Give me a channel and then I'll be looking for that downside. But I'm not keen on the buy and pong. I'm keen on the sell and pong because the structure that we're looking at in the four hour is pretty much this structure, right? I've posted this, I've been following it for a while. So we had a one, two, three. There's a possibility we are making a one, two, three. So we'll have to retest this level. Come here, retest this before they go up, if they're gonna go up. Very likely we could be breaking to the downside, right? I think that is very, very likely. So keep an eye on this one. We could be coming down, right? That upside is temporary, just a pullback within the structure. Aussie, this is definitely a pullback. We, we looked at this structure. We know what we're doing. We had a very sharp move down, and we are correcting that move up. You had your first correction here. This was the trade I post. We got part of this. It came back. Some of us got some profit out of it. Some of us got break even. Pullbacks. My traders took this one up, some of this up, and we were like looking to take this up if it wasn't a news event. So like I said, if I were in my trading room today, I wasn't there, the guys were trading without me, we would put an entry order during non, before non-farm period, we would put an entry order above that top for this move here with a stop here. Because what we are looking for is the move to the upside. Right? This one was definitely upside. Let's see what the biggest structure is telling us. It's telling us it's making a correction. And the daily, this is what we're looking for. Right? We had a daily move up. We broke that daily trend line coming down. See that? 
we made a move down there, it's just natural that they will correct this move. So this is just a little correction in this move, going up back, and we may go up some more, and then we're going to look for downside. If they give us this, remember I posted this, you're expecting uh, this correction. I don't know what time frame, but I posted it at some time where we were expecting this flag to happen. Right? If you look at that flag, we were expecting something like that, and that is what we're doing right now, right? This is what we are making. We're making a corrective structure here. They're going up. They could still come back down, go back up, come back down, and we get a flag here. We're looking for this cell. So although it looks like, oh, it's crazy, it's making a very big candle, when you look at the structure, it's just a little candle within the structure, right? This, this was big move up as well. Maybe some fundamental news that spiked that up. But eventually it just turned out to be a small correction, which we should sell. So in a four hour, we're in a corrective structure. I'm looking for sell opportunities. One hour, let's see if we have anything there. Nothing that says sell as yet. And nothing that says sell it yet, but we will be looking for a sell very soon. And they're pretty much very close to that top, and we look for an opportunity for a sell. I am not jumping into the candle on top to sell it. That's not how we do. We don't have a strategy that says sell the top of this move, because we don't know that is the top. If they break the structure out, if they break it out of this channel, which is very possible, it would even be better for us because any down move with an impulse and a correction in a lower degree would be our sell opportunity. I remember you're in a correction, you're going to go up, you're going to go down probably for about a week or two more before we get that one more very sharp downside. Right? There's one more very big downside to come. That is one more big one to, like this to test the low of, of this whole thing. Right? They're going to test the low of this structure, so I'll very likely break it. So this correction to the upside here may happen some more. You may get some very nice trades more up there, and then we look for this trade down. It's already in play. You know, the, the top trend line really doesn't mean anything. It's just to give us an indication if they can stop there. This is what you're looking for. So you're looking for short-term buys, short-term sells, until they break the structure. New Zealand, pretty much this one went up much higher than I thought it would go. So the best thing to do is stay out of this structure. and It looks like they're going up to retest the top, which is not part of this structure that I was looking for because I thought they would come to the blow first. So if they're going up to make one more, they'll have to break this top. This entire structure in its entirety, even if they get to that top, will come down back, right? This is a big, big, big corrective structure that will come down back eventually. So it's just a matter of how far are they going to go. Make the top or just make a very deep pullback and then come down. And right, we'll see. We'll take this off. We'll eventually see what structure they're making. We're not trading this for a while now. Swiss downside, we talked about this. We knew we were going to have a correction in there because they were breaking this trend line to the upside. Right? The question was how much they were going to go down. Right? How much and from where? And it went down pretty fast. That's part of the, the news, but that's part of the structure that you're expecting as well. So you can look for some kind of a sign of upside and probably may, more correction. Somebody's mic. Victor, your microphone is on. Don't forget. Uh, no, I just made Mark. Uh, uh, okay. Tell, Mar Mark. tell Mark his microphone what? is on so he can. Mark, your microphone is on. Can you mute him back again, please, then? Yeah. Tell him his microphone is on so he knows. He's probably not. He's setting up a set. That's why he's probably doing it. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Let's go. <coughs> Can you tell him his microphone is on? Thank you. Yep. This was a nice one. I hope I hope my traders took this in the trading room because we, we, we just, uh, a couple of hours before that, we had our webinar and we said this is going to fall. Right now, not that we expect it to go this fast, but this is going to make a C wave to the downside, break this low. So if we were thinking it's probably going to do this. Well, good, good if you take the trade, right? Because it's a break of a structure that we expected to go down. We're making a correction. No need to worry. It's very simple. You're making an A, a B. You're going to make a C somewhere here, and we're looking for more upside in this structure. That is pretty simple. This, this, these are not very complex structures, and it's nothing to start freaking out. Oh, non-farm payroll is falling. You know, those are part of the structure. That's actually this one. If I was in the trading room, we'd definitely put an entry order for a sell here, right? 
there are two of them that we should have been trading that is the Aussie and this one because they were like 99% of doing what we expect them to do and they did exactly that so an ABC correction watch it when it breaks this low we'll start going up back if you're gonna have a sell setup they will have to break the low make a pullback like this and then go down again which is do this and go down again I don't see that possibility happening right now I think they're gonna probably go back up so next week we may start to see some very sharp moves to the upside yen this one was a little surprise it came much lower than I thought it was gonna go I thought we we're gonna turn from here make a move up and then come down well they made a very shallow channel there and they broke the channel to the downside actually so now if we're gonna look at this in the daily you can see that in the daily there's a possibility that this is just a deep pullback but there is still a chance they may make one more low I'm not looking for that but let's see if they make one more low and then we'll be looking for the upside because this thing is about a turn and here is where we will actually start the real webinar that you're invited to come and do that is looking at all the yen pairs right so why I want to look at all the yen pairs because all the yen pairs are in a very very interesting spot and most of them are actually about to start giving us a very big up move right most of the yen pairs so this is why I think this webinar I want to look at those yen pairs and see whether those moves are gonna come so I'll be looking at them at the higher time frame I'll be looking at them at the daily, the weekly, the monthly time frame. We're not looking for trade setups. We're looking for direction that it could go. And if it starts to go in that direction, next week I'll be posting trades with trade setups in 240 and 60 minutes on those directions that it could go. Right? So we're not looking for a trade today. It's Friday. You guys want to have a nice weekend. Go get some beer and relax and do all that stuff. And next week we'll come back to that. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm not reading the chat, by the way, guys, because I'm, I'm, it's two different screens for me. I noticed you guys were chatting. Sorry if I, if I didn't read it, and uh, not a lot of, not anybody see it. So you probably want to keep it to the end, and when I finish, I'll leave enough time for question and answer so I can read it so other people could see what you guys wrote, because I don't know how to make it visible. I don't think this platform offers that possibility. I wish everybody would have seen what you're writing. That would have made my life easier. So let's go. We'll start with the monthly and the yen, the dollar yen, and we would look at what the monthly structure is telling us. So if you're looking at this monthly structure, it looks as if it's going sideways, but in reality, this thing has been coming down for years and years and years. It was a very, very sharp downside for years. So this was the lowest point it has ever been. And I think for all good reasons, I think it is going to go up some more. Now, we know that they just don't start like that go up. If you look at all structures, they look like three wave structures before they go, right? You look at all big structures, they're three wave structures before they come. Right? If you look at all structures, so what we would what we can anticipate to happen here, not that it will happen or we think it's going to, but we can always anticipate a move up, a move back down, and then the upside. And I think all of you have seen structures like this, right? They made a sharp move up. They made a sideways and then they made another one. So it means that for the next couple months in this year, maybe this entire year, or a month or two, we could be in this entire sideways move. There are very rare times when they just make one deep correction like they made in this one here, and then they take off. If that is the case, I think I'll be happy, all of us will be happy, because then the up move is starting and we're going to have a very big up move. So for us to start having the up move, one second, somebody said no audio there. I think the entire room is hearing me. Somebody please tell Zahib is his side. That uh, we, everybody else has audio. I think everybody else can hear me. Yep, so somebody needs to tell him that it's his side, right? He, he's not seeing the chat, guys. I'm just conveying to you somebody. Okay, Victor, can you give him a Victor? Just give him, right? Tell him that it's his side. Okay, thank you. So on the daily we need to know if this move is about to over right this move is getting and we're getting a lot of divergence here they did break the trend line which was good sign for us that they're probably going to go up and then they start to come down at this point remember we we thought this one was going to come down here but it didn't instead at this point we thought it's going to come down it didn't it started to go back up and we're getting a very strong downside now as of yet I don't see a big reason, you know, there may be a small sell if you were selling from the top or so, but right now I don't see that, you know, what 
a sell set up here for me. For me, I'll have to wait for a pullback. If I get a pullback like this, I'll get a sell set up. If they pull back like this, I'll be looking for a sell next week. If they just keep going, I'll let it go, right? Because I don't want to jump into this candle at the bottom and watch it go back up and I'm in the trade, right? Just tag me up in the trade. So we'll have to wait to see where it goes. We'll see what happens to this. And on the bigger picture, this structure is about to end. This entire structure is about to end because we have a lot of divergence we crossed. So I'm going to watch this to probably, even if it comes, make one more low here. And then we will start to look for the upside. Right? So the bigger trade that we would be looking for in all yen pairs is to the upside to retest this stop. If we're making three wave structure, we will probably do something like this, and then we will do one more drop before we go. If they're not making three wave structure, they would actually go very aggressively up. And that means we, we don't want to miss that big trade to the upside. Right? On the Euro Yen, I think all of you know we're looking for this upside for a long while. Let's put it in the weekly, monthly, so you can see probably in the weekly. And the weekly, we have a very similar structure, a sharp move up. We've got a very sharp move down here, a pullback, and we're getting this here. And this here eventually is going to go back up. So I think we will complete this three-wave structure, and we'll be going back up very soon. So let's look at that in the daily. On the daily, they're going down some more. They're still within the downtrend. Put it in a four-hour. You're still getting some downside, but it's not very aggressive, right? If you look at the last couple of lows, every time they broke it, like this one here, every time they broke the low, they just go a couple pips beyond. See that? So there is no momentum to the downside, and we are getting a lot of divergence. So at some point, this thing starts going back up. That is a very good clue that at some point, this thing really starts going back up. And once it goes and it breaks this trend, all this move is going to be one hell of a move to the upside. It means it's going to be a very, very huge move to the upside. And you really want to be in this trade if it starts to go up. because And the only thing that could push this trade up so much would be the yen itself going up. Because even if euro is to go up, it's not going to be able to push. Euro doesn't have that high capacity to go. Euro is mostly in a sideways flat. Right? On the daily euro is in a big sideways flat, so we're not going to expect much more up on it. Pong yen, structurally, I think there may be one more trade to the downside. You guys, this may be confusing to a lot of you right now. Let me see if I can make it better, take off this. Let me just take off everything and go through this, so it's going to be easier for you guys to, to understand what's going on there. Remove everything. And we're looking at the very similar structure in the yen, a very big move. Like all yen pairs, they have this very big move up. They already have a very, very sharp corrective structure down. So at some point, this corrective structure is going to start to go back up. At least either they're going to come here for a move and then one more down, or they're going to just continue to go. But an up correction is very, very likely. So in a daily, if we look at this piece coming down, we have a lot of divergence, but if you look at it, what you can see is that they may make one more move to the downside. And remember I said Pong has one more move to the downside. So the downside in this doesn't necessarily have to be with the yen. It could actually be with the Pong, right? You can see very clearly that this, this pattern, we've been following this, this pattern here all the time when it went up and we knew we were going to have one more down because we were looking at this structure. And we were looking at this structure because we actually were trading this structure. If you remember, I think in the four hour, there's a cell set up there. Way at the top here in this one. There's a cell set up. Yep, cell set up all the way. So we don't want to miss it this time here, right? There's a similar structure in A, a B, and a C. And they're going down. That is why we're looking for this to go down. It hasn't broken the structures yet. But once they break, we'll be OK. I don't think they're going to break this immediately. I think this here. And the lower time frame has a channel, so that channel may go up first and then down. So if on the up way of that channel, which is a short-term trade, a very short-term trade, if we get a flag somewhere in here, 
this would be a perfect trade setup for downside and that means we will all be taking that trade all of us will be in that trade next week so there's 180 plus people in this room we're hoping that if you're following me in trading view you will be able to get that trade and you probably stay in it for quite a long while because that is how it moves short term this thing may give you one up it's very possible this structure here is telling us that short term they may go back one up and then come down so the, the trade to the upside the most immediate trade to the upside which we're going to get next week will probably give us a trade to the upside because every time you see a channel like this they're likely going to go up right we had a previous channel like that here see that and that went up so very likely we're going to have the upside from this channel Aussie yen Aussie yen is in this big structure here and we are you can get you can see that that is a flag you've seen this let me show you the inverse of one of that that is this flag here see that a move up a flag and then they go right up right you can see one here this is more like that a move down and we're going down. so we have a very sharp one here we're going sideways look for the breakout and this is your trade this is a very nice trade for next week once they break that structure put it in a four hour so you can see it better and I think very likely they're going to break the structure we have completed a three wave pattern already up one two three and this is likely going to break out so you can wait for this breakout and take that trade down right very very nice trade as a matter of fact let me show you back in the bigger picture so you can see actually we were following this 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 Aussie so close I can show you all these trades in the Aussie all of them showing that we were you know we were really really looking at this structure and it was just amazing how it moves and it's just amazing how you could pick those right you see this one here coming down to the low there you could actually pick those right and then they broke this structure so that was a flag there for more sell actually we had more charts like that we had charts here look the sell here when they broke that structure when they broke that consolidation for a sell again is when they broke this little console we had the first trade down here then the second trade here when they broke that consolidation to the downside see straight to the downside and then we're looking at this consolidation here a little more up and then down I think this was it where we started posting those wave analysis showing people that it's going to go a little more up we followed this whole thing all the way to the top there and then all the way to the, the bottom and then we finished the structure, right? This one, one more down. This was the one more down, I think. Aussie yen down side. We followed this all the way to the down here. One, two, three, four, five. And they came down. So this was the structure. This is going to finish the move, this piece here. You still have this little trade here to the down side. And if you can get this next week, that would be great. At this point, we think we'll go up. It's from that point that the structure will complete itself. This structure we're looking at will complete itself here and we should start to see some upside. Serious upside. So that means we really, really want to be in this trade if it starts to do that. We'll look for the sell next week and then by the end of the week we'll probably get a buy opportunity that could become a very, very, very long-term trade. You don't want to miss that one. I promise you. Uh, this one is not so good structurally we don't know where we are we're sitting on the trend line here and they're not giving us any clue right the clue is they have to break this for an up move one more of this up move here as a one two three two three four five structure which is possible you can look at this and see we probably come to about this level see that will probably come to about this level here that is a trade or this thing is actually breaking out of this low and then we're going to retest this low here so this would be one and this would be another one this is a hell of a trade as well it just have to break and this thing is about to break so it's either gonna break this week coming next week coming but it is about to break which means you if you're following me and you watch I'll be posting these trades setup but this one is going to be amazing All right so we don't know if it's bullish or bearish as yet and then in New Zealand this is not no sign of bullish or bearish we just have to wait for it to give us a sign it has to either break one out of these two trend lines it hasn't done that as yet 
we're still within a sideways move. You see that? This is the uptrend and this is the downtrend and we're sitting in that corner and they keep bouncing up and down in that corner there. See that? So at some point they're going to either do that or they're going to do that. And we're going to have some wonderful trade. Let's go to the Cadian. Cadian also in this sideways move. Weekly, we're sitting on this trend line. See that? That means this looks like it's going to break. This here could break to the downside. We don't know, but it's look very possible. If they go back up, there's a nice trade here. And if they continue to go, we're going to have one of this. Right? So I think most of them, they're consolidated enough. They're at the trend line there for a long time. So maybe this week, next week, they are going to break. And believe me, if they break, we want to be in those trades. All of us. So that means if you're following me, you're going to get into those trades because I'll be posting those trade setups that say it's ready to go. Hopefully you guys could save your friends as well by showing them the trades and see what they're doing, what they think about it. Swiss Yen, we have a very slight downside. We have one more downside probably, maybe one more downside, and then eventually this is going up. We've got an A, B, C structure. So there's a likelihood we're looking for more upside on this. right? These structures, this structure here in the 4 hour, eventually is going to go up. They broke this and they're coming down, so we broke that loan. We have divergence. Very soon we will start to see the upside. I hope it's next week we start getting these impulses to the upside, and then we get a correction, and then we start trading them. All the yen pairs, are, if not next week, if the other week, the week after that, they will be ready to go. All of them are at very, very interesting spots. So if you can get into one of those here, only one of those yen trades, sit in it for the long term and just keep adding trades as it go. If the movement start, it would be amazing. You will double your account on one pair. Literally, you can double your account on one pair. You just have to understand what the structure is doing, how it's going to go, and how you get in into it. Basically. So. We have finished all the end pairs. We can take some questions from you guys, and then uh, we can call it a wonderful Friday afternoon. I always leave about 30 minutes for question because that is the best time. Let's go. Let me see if I can read some of those questions that I miss. Should we buy Euro again and keep it for a few days? No, you don't have a reason to buy a Euro now. You should wait for Euro to pull back and then make that decision. Yep, fast down, fast up. I agree with that. Very likely. Let me see. Uh, any egg? Okay, we finished that one. Let me see my favorite. Should we buy? I finished that. Yes, good idea. Yeah, we wait for consultant. Should we buy again? I don't know what that one is. I agree. Uh, no volume, no volume, no volume, yes. Do you have a win on, uh, if I have a view in the UK 100, I don't have the UK 100 chart, so I, I don't I don't look at it, I don't, I'm not trading it. So definitely no, we can, if you want we can look at it at the end of the webinar if I have extra time. New Zealand monthly starting bullish, not as yet. We looked at that already. Just wanted to say thank you for the good work. You're welcome. There's no, you know, just just enjoy it. I'm always glad to help. Um, let me go with the rest of the questions. Let me see. What about Pong Oz? Pong Oz, I think it's going to go up. It's just making a deeper pullback. Right? What else beside the Pong Oz is there? How to join trading room? We'll talk. Uh, let's leave that question for the trading five minutes after the webinar is about to finish. I will talk about that. I don't want to board everybody who is not interested in it. Only those who are interested in what we do, I'll do that because there are people who come here and they're not interested in my trading, and I'll be just hyping them things they don't need, as they will say, selling them advertisement. I don't want to do that. Can you please check silver? Silver is up. We are buying. We're all buyers in the silver. If you're not in the silver, let me tell you something. Once we see an area in silver to buy, we buy like crazy. We're all we all bought at that 618. Right? Once it hit that 618, all my traders say buy. No question asked. Just buy silver. 
I hope it breaks now because it's going very aggressive and if it breaks you you may have a second chance to buy and we will add some more trades to that. So we are up in silver and we did not take out silver during the news event. None of my traders are supposed to even touch silver during any news event. It doesn't matter because our stop is at zero. Any one of you new to my room trading silver? I, I'm pretty sure all of you in here have heard me talk about how to trade silver, right? Zero stop on silver. Once it comes back to that 16, you're buying and no stop. Which one will lead the yen? If you ask me personally which one is going to lead that up move, I have a very strong bias in the, for the up move. I think it's the euro yen, the Swiss yen, and I'll be watching in the Aussie yen, the lead in the upside. But first, they will all have to finish that small downside. I think the Pong Yen has a downside more. I'm more, more convinced it's going to take a long time for the Pong Yen to turn because Pong is more downside. We can have Aussie, Euro, and Swiss Swiss going up, Aussie, Euro consolidating within a very, very long time, making consolidations, which means literally going sideways. And if Yen goes up, it's going to drag those pair up very, very strong. So it's mostly the yen, the dollar yen is the moving factor if it starts to go up. So we will watch it next week very carefully to see. This drop in the non-farm pearl may be the catch of it where they start, drop this, clear stops and start going up from here. Comment on gold, I really don't like to, I don't trade gold. I only do that for people who trade gold and it's pretty much going up a little. It was a short buy if my traders would see that that day, the break of there. But if they were trading it in non farm period, well, I don't know if they put an entry order. They should have had an entry order here. If they were trading it during non farm period, well, I, I, was, I don't trade gold, I trade silver. It's the same thing except less cost, right? And I think it's coming back. I think this here is an expanding flat one two, three, so we may be going up. You, if, you're if you're looking for a buy situation, don't please jump in the candle. Wait for pullback. They always do. Wait for the pullback. If you don't know anything about structure, you know you have to wait for that pullback. Let's see what else you're looking at. Uh, somebody asking, you know, Gold, how do you avoid being sucked into trades when the markets spike out of the trend line? Uh, you have stop loss, that is one. The second thing is I'm not in trades during, unless it's a trade like silver, where I really don't have a stop and I don't care how low it goes, I'll buy more, right? Like the yen pair, I was in the dollar yen this morning, the trade that I post just before non farm pair, I took off the trade because it wasn't positive. I think I was still about five pips upside down on it, 10 pips or something like that, I took it off. And there is no need to keep those trades if they're not. If I have a trade and it's 100 pip positive and I have a long-term view in it, I would care less about non-farm payroll. And I've done that before in the Euro. I've showed you guys, you guys my account. Actually, that made me a ton of money. $46,000 in one day. One move. That's the largest sum of money I ever made in one single day. Right? That was your non-farm payroll and I had or oh, euro on, I had um, euro yen, a uh, euro Oz on, and I had a few other trades that were already in profit. Euro was slightly not in profit, but the rest of them were already in profit. And then that spike came in, and I was like, okay, good, very good harvest. You don't get that every day, right? That's not normal trading, that's just luck, right? It goes in the direction you are already in, and it just helps you, basically. Um, let's see what else. Normal trading is when you get your correction and you buy the impulse and the impulse goes up the way it should go. If I was trading today, I'd be buying Aussie and I'll be selling CAD. Those were the two best setups we have in our trading room this morning. Uh, let's see what question else. Can I see Pong Yen again, please? Okay, one second. We'll come back to that. Let's see if there's any other question. Uh, if all Yen pairs are moving in one direction, which is the best one to trade? Here's the thing. There is nothing like the best one to trade. I all, people always ask me, which is the best pair? There's nothing like the best pair to trade. There's something like the best setup to trade. Right? So if I see a great setup on any one of them, I'm going on that one. Right? I'll be posting those setups on TradingView, at least some of them. I can't promise you all of them. I'll be posting some of them in TradingView. So if you're following me, you will get them. I'm pretty sure all of you in here are following me in TradingView, so you will get them. Um, uh, what else? Can I see Pung and We'll do that again. Um, Aussie, New Zealand. Aussie, New Zealand, by the way, is in. 
what I will do, let me do a webinar on Aussie next week for you, because Aussie is very interesting also. Aussie New Zealand, Aussie Yen, it means the Aussie dollar has something going on that may just make one more move down and then start an up move. I don't think this is the up move starting, but I could be wrong. Because Aussie Yen and Aussie New Zealand are ready to go up also. If you look at the Aussie New Zealand, there's one more drop to the downside we were expecting, and then we think it's going to start a very big up move, right? Because this, right, this drop here to test this low. I know people were starting to buy here, but I was like, no, that's crazy stuff. Wait for them to test the low, right? They will have to come test the low. I have to be careful of my words. I like to use words just not meaning anything serious when I say, like, that's crazy stuff. When people start thinking I'm arrogant, right? So I have to, I have to start being careful with what I say now. People start getting all worked up and, you know, they're like, he's insulting us. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm just saying this stuff is crazy, right? It's going to touch this low before it goes. But once it does that, once it breaks this low here and comes complete this pattern, we are in this trade going up all the way. So we're looking for Aussie Yen up. We're looking for Aussie New Zealand up. There's something, something is happening here, right? Something is going to happen there, and we're going to get those trades. We'll be writing those trades for, for thousands of pips. Not joking, seriously. Um, how can you, uh, we have answered that question already, Pong New Zealand, is it going long soon? Pong New Zealand is correcting right now, so you shouldn't interfere, wait for that correction to finish. Uh, now how large is your stop loss? How large is my stop loss? I don't put stop loss in terms of large and small. It doesn't matter, you could have a stop loss that is 200 pips, or you could have a stop loss that is 10 pips. It depends on what percent of your account you're risking on the stop. Right, Johnson, if you have a 10 pip stop loss and you're risking 10% of your account and it hit your stop loss, you lose 10% of your account. If you have a stop loss that is 400 pips and you're risking 1% of your account and it hit your stop loss, you were going to lose 1% of your account. So it's not the size of your stop loss that is important. It's how much percent of money you have at risk open. And that is how we look at all our trades. We don't look at them as how much pips you make. I don't have my. I don't ask my traders how much pips they make. How much percent are you up in your account? Because we're here to make money, not pips. It really doesn't matter. So, and the question is, 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 is. I think you're new to trading since you asked the question. So, um, that's not how it works. And if you're using a good money management, you know how much you should risk. I actually did a, a webinar on money management. You can check it up on YouTube. It's there. How about Aussie USD? If we just looked at it. You can watch the webinar later. We can't really look at everything. It's going to take a long. May I ask you about this MACD? No, you may not ask because I don't know what you want to know about the MACD. You can Google it. You'll have a lot of things about it. Hi, Anil. How about the Euro Pong? Uh, Euro Pong, it's actually we're looking for some more downside on it. It's just correcting to the upside, we think. So we'll see there. It's it's very close to the top of a daily trend. Let's see what it does there. Do you follow Elliott Wave principles with three or five wave structures fundamentally? Seems like you're trying to figure out if it's three or five wave. Elliott structure, correct, waiting especially for wave three to occur in structure. I have no idea what that question is. Honestly, I think I have a very good idea of, of wave structure and Elliott wave theory. I'm pretty good. I'm very versed at Elliott wave theory, but I have no idea what you're trying to say in that question. Sorry about that. I didn't mean anything bad, but I read the question and I have no idea what you're trying to say. And we would not even discuss Elliott wave structure here. I would not engage anyone in trading you or even in here to discuss Elliott wave structure unless I think you're very qualified for that. Uh, I'm not going to go into the petty stuff of it because I think I'm very versed in it, so I'm not going to engage. You know, it's going to waste of my time. I'm sorry about it, but that would be a waste of my time. One guy tried to engage me there. He even wrote in his name Elliot Wave Chartist, and I just break him up in three seconds. I look at his Aussie count, and he was counting a three wave as five, and you're fixing the chart, and that's it. After that discussion over, you have no idea what you're doing. You're fixing the chart. You're not actually labeling or you're not reading the charts. There's a difference between I don't fix what the chart is doing. I read what the chart is doing, and they're two, that's two absolutely different concepts. So discussing with people like that is just a waste of my time. 
usual Elliott wave uses five wave pattern. Your analysis is based on three waves. You don't know my analysis. That's nonsense you're talking. Can you explain a bit more on this channel? No. You, here's the thing. Here's why I said nonsense you're talking. Because you, as you make assumption about me that you don't know. You follow what I'm saying? If you had completed my course and then you would come to me with that question, we will discuss it. But none of my traders will come to me with that question, right? I'm absolutely sure about that. After they complete the course, they wouldn't do. They wouldn't. They wouldn't come with that nonsense to me. So, I don't. I, it's like me saying something about you without knowing you and telling you this is what you think, and then said, "Let's discuss it." It's. It's. I don't know where to start from because that's not what I do. Right? That's not what I think. You have no idea what I think or what I do in relate to it. But good try. What do you think of Punkad? Punkad is in a correction. There is a down move happening for an ABC. I showed it. If you watch the start of the webinar, you'll see it. it's making an ABC and then it's going to go up some more. And it'll how to find the potential reverse zone. That's a good question, but to, to make you give you the answer to that question, I'll have to teach you wave structure. I'll have to literally show you. We know how to find it because we look at the entire structure. Let me look at Punkat and show you what I mean by that. This I'm answering the question to the guy who wanted to know how to find reversal zone, and I'm going to answer the question to the Punkat guy at the same time, right? So how do we find re reversal zone? How did I know that you're looking for a sell in this structure to the downside? Right? Very good question. How do I know that that is going to come down at least to this trend line? It actually broke the trend line, but the minimum you're looking for, that's a reversal zone to come to this level. So how do we find those reversal zones from there coming down to the bottom here, which was a sell we took, right? And we were, I was hoping that it probably may bounce off of this for one more upside. They didn't do that. They actually break straight through. We got out of the trade. We did not stay in the trade. We got out of the trade here when they started the bunks, right? You see that? When they started the bunks, there we got. But then we got in back trades in this area here, and we got in back some trades in here. So what this is doing is making an ABC structure now. Let's go to where it's real now. And what it is doing here in a four hour is it's making a corrective structure to the downside, right? It made a move down here. We're making some correction here. We may get some more little low here, and then we're going to go back up. We're looking at this corrective structure to buy. So very soon, we're looking for buy up on that thing. Let's see if we get the buy very soon. Um, let's see. What do you think? Oh, OK, I answered both of those questions. Uh, how do you train your mind? Uh, let me see that. How do you train your mind and control your emotions when trading? coming to an acceptance of losses? That's a very, very good question, David. I would really love to answer that question. It may take a long time. I'm going to give you a very short answer to it now, but I can do an entire webinar on that for you guys if you want. It's very simple. Think of your risk. The biggest problem with traders coming to having them, well, I don't think you can control your mind. I don't think you can control your emotions. That's, 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 out, of, that's out of anyone's risk. Because anybody who tells you you can totally control your emotion is actually lying to you. You can train yourself to control some of your emotions at some times, but not every time, especially. But the number one reason is not try to uh, control emotions. We're not doing mind game. It's try to make sure those emotions are not triggered. Right? Something is triggering your emotion. Like the guy who, who triggered my emotion just now, when he tell me what I'm thinking, he triggered an emotion in me because I don't like people to tell me what I am thinking. It's they, they don't know what I'm thinking. I never say to somebody, hey, you are thinking this. Because I'm, I, I think I'm you know, a little smart enough not to say that to somebody because I don't know what they're thinking. So what triggers your emotion when you're trading? If you're in a trade and it's going against you, why is it triggering that emotion? There are two reasons. One, the money you're losing, you cannot accept. So you have to stop losing that sum of money. You have to put a smaller amount of money at risk. Two, you probably don't have a stop, so you don't know how much money you're going to lose. And in that case, you're going to be in panic all the time because you have no idea how much you're going to lose. You're just losing, losing, and you have no idea. So you can actually prevent both of those. One is you can decide where you're going to put a stop. And the second one is you will know exactly what sum of money you're losing. Does that help you, David? I think that should help. But that's, that's just at the top of the layer of what I could tell you about how to trade so that no one trade 
should have a single effect in you. Basically, I'm in trades, and sometimes I don't know if I'm taken out of the trade or if I'm taking it, if my profit level is reached. Because one day we were trading, and one of my traders said, hey, we got tagged in that trade, and we were going. I was like, yeah, right, let me go. I went, check my account. Yes, we were tagged. But I didn't know that because I had my entry order there. It has a stop and it has the entry order. One day we were in trading and said, oh, you're, we got taken out in that trade. I went, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm out of that trade. And I didn't realize I was out of the trade. I lost the trade, but I didn't realize it because that one single trade has no value to me. It will not build my account and it can never, ever break my account. It's a series of trades that I trade that builds my account and break my account. If I get a series of lost, I will notice it because I'll see my account dropping radically. If I get a series of win, I'll see it. Or if I get a win like that one day where I made 46, oh, wow, my emotions are skyrocketing. That will not happen again, maybe in my lifetime, unless I'm trading a very huge sum of money, right? It does, those are rare incidents. Like if you're trading a news event today and it, you take a small trade and it goes in your direction, of course you're going to see a change in your account. But those are lucky moments. Those are not technical trading, how you should be trading all the time, right? You shouldn't be trading for luck. If you're putting luck into your trade, you're in big trouble. Take the luck out of your trade and make it a business. Sir, USCN go up? Mm, that That's a good question. I think I answered it. You'll have to relook at the webinar. I know you mentioned in the previous webinar about your MACD indicator by Victor. Could you ask Victor and inform us where? Oh, you can find it. Victor, maybe you can. Oh, Victor already helped you, yes. You can actually find it under his name in the trading view. You, you should be able to find it there. Punk Chief, is it in a deep correction uh, down move? I don't think so. Let's go look at the punk chief. I don't think it's in a deep correction to the downside. No, not it. it's going to break this low. It's going to make some more, but then we're going to look for upside very soon. So there's some more downside here. We're breaking that trend. By the way, something we were discussing in our, our in our webinar this morning, and we said, yep, they're going to break. Watch it. But this may be the last impulse in this one. You notice we had an impulse here. We had a correction. We had an impulse. We got a correction. Watch this last one to finish, and then probably up move from here. Right? Good question. I like it. I like I like you know questions like that. Not. Can you check Pound New Zealand, please? Oh, we can't do that. If we go check all the trades one by one, we'll not. Then somebody wants Pound Oz. Then somebody after. Let's skip those. We'll skip Pound New Zealand, Pound Oz. Let's go with more questions. Like, have any thoughts on oil level? Oil is in correction. Sir, yen will it go up again? You're asking the same question. It will go up sometime. That is what we. That's what the whole webinar is all about. Is Pong Oz a sell? Okay, let's skip that. Uh, uh, do you care about the news? Not that I don't care about the news. I don't trade the news. That's a whole different story. I care about a lot of things, but I don't. I don't really get involved in them. I don't. I don't trade the news itself. Like I, I just explained, it, it. The news events drive. They they use that as an opportunity to drive the market, but the market still moves technically, right? Like euro went up, but we were anticipating an up move in euro. Right? If you look at my last post on Euro was anticipating an up move. Aussie went up, we were anticipating a move on Aussie. Right? Punk, uh, the card went down, the Swiss went down, we were anticipating those moves. The Yen was the only one I wasn't anticipating such a big move to the downside with. How often do you do these sessions? Once a week I'll try my best to do. After a correction, in which case the trend reverse, which case the trend will continue. Oh. Uh, well, that uh, if you're asking after a correction which direction the trend is going to go, you have to learn structure. That will take some time. That will take you a good six weeks course. I've heard something fifth wave is a week and uh, it does not move much. Is there any way to predict that? No, there isn't. And that's not true. That's not true. Sometimes fifth wave is the extended wave. Rarely, but it happens. So there is no exact formation of the fifth wave is going to be short and I could show you right now that there are some fifth waves that are pretty huge right uh, you hold the long-term view of long silver yet yeah. long-term view of silver correcting to a higher level before it comes down back it's going to go sideways in the monthly and the weekly so that means you can trade it up now and then wait for it to get I think it may get very close to the top and then start coming down back again not all the way to the top but it's about a 618 pull back and then it's going to come down you hold a long-term view of silver and USD. 
Oh, that has nothing to do with anything. Don't, don't, don't. There isn't any serious correlation to that. You want to see the dollar was going down and when, when silver was going down? Check the charts, you're going to see that. It's going to go like up and down very slowly. It's not like it's one that's going to go. They're going to be bouncing down, up and down. Dollar could get strong and silver could get strong both. There's not, not, nothing is absolutely wrong with that. Doesn't No, they don't contradict. There's nothing. Here, here's what I'm going to say at once. I saw somebody post something about correlation and charts and some at 20% correlate and 50% correlate. I really don't know what they mean by that and how that works. But I look at each, each chart separately. Let me show you what I mean by that. And I'll take about two minutes. I think you guys have the patience for that. Let's assume for a second that somebody tomorrow in Australia find a huge reserves of silver. Huge reserves. And dollar is getting weak. Silver is supposed to get strong, right? But they found the huge reserve and they make the news open. Silver price would likely go down. It has nothing to do with the dollar, right? It's going to go down. But let's, for some reason, we found out tomorrow that six companies that were mining silver actually went bankrupt. They're no longer mining. They're closing down all the mining fields. And dollar is getting strong, right? Dollar is slowly going up. What would happen to the price of silver? It's not good to fall because dollar is going down because they just told you, hey, there's no, there's no more silver coming. All these companies are closing down. Silver is going to be limited. What is going to happen to the price of silver? Regardless of whether the dollar is going up and down, it's going to skyrocket. So there isn't a correlation to that. The silver price is, it will change if dollar price change if you're buying it in dollar. It will change if the euro price change if you're buying it in euro. It will change to the ruble price if you're buying it in ruble. We're not talking about change of, of, of value price. We're talking about change of the price of silver itself. Silver is cheap, it will get more expensive regardless of what. Right? So it's cheap right now, it will get more expensive. That is what I'm saying. Regardless of whether dollar will get more expensive or dollar will get more cheap, it doesn't matter. Silver will get more expensive. Silver separately from dollar. But people said, okay, uh, the US, uh, the, 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 rule, the euro is correlated to the pound or something. There isn't. Each one is separate economy. So there isn't any correlation with these currencies. Like people think, okay, the New Zealand is correlated to the Aussie. No, they're not. Those are two separate economy. They're moving at their own rate. They have their own, you know, thing going on. So the 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 the, the, the value of the, the the Aussie doesn't have to be correlated to the value of the New Zealand. It depends on how those economies are going to develop separately, right? So there isn't anybody who tell you there is probably doesn't. You know, well, I don't know. I, I hate to say that, because the next thing you know, people are going to say I'm, I'm criticizing anybody else again. Something about natural gas. Oh, natural gas is one heaven for my guys. Is it going up? Yep, we're in the buys. Oh, you see this pink line? Somebody was asking. That's an entry order. All my, some of my traders who trade this stuff, and it just went off. Their stop. Here, this was their risk, and they're already in profit. And they're keeping, some of them are keeping that for the long run. Natural gas is going to go up. So what you can do, if you want, they may start to take out some profit. You may see some correction here and buy. If you get any correction like that, you're buying. Natural gas is going to go up. Anything that makes a pullback is a correction. We broke the daily trend. The daily weekly structure is broken. See that? So this thing is in an up move, and it's going to go up. It's going to go up, may get as high as that, but it's not going to go tomorrow, right? If you think, watch how long this price took to come from there to here. See? I think that's like 749 days. That's a lot of time, right? So it's going to take a lot of time, but you're climbing in a nice trend here. You see that? You, you got a trend climbing, so that's okay. Every pullback, you buy. That's the point. You get a pullback, you buy. Uh... Pangos, please, again, Pangos, please. I think we, we looked at those trades already. We'll come back to them just now. I'll look at some more trades here. So tell me about USCN. Okay, You're, if you ask the same question one more time, it will be considered trolling. Let me just say this to you. If you ask a question once and I ignore it, don't ask it three times. I'll ignore it more. We already talked about the Pang in the yen. When you watch the webinar, you will see it. I understand that. I'm just curious. Uh, like to do average range. Okay, great. Uh, hi, Anil. As per Pong New Zealand was the corrective word entry I would aim for long. 
we're not going to look at each one of those individual for everybody. We're not giving, it's not a signal. I'm not producing signal for people here today. Was there a way to see which way USGN was going to go today to have got into the breakdown? Uh, I, I couldn't say that I structurally saw that coming. It did break down. Uh, probably it would have gone both ways. I was expecting mostly a correction to the upside before it goes down. So maybe if you had put an entry order under the low, if you wanted to trade this on a news event, there are two ways you could trade this in a news event. You could put an entry order under the low or an entry order under the, above the high. If you my, my view was that this structure was going to go up. It didn't, right? They just go sideways and then they drop. Well, I wasn't looking for a sell setup, so I missed that, but that's okay. Right? If I'm, I was out of the trade and I missed it, so that's okay. Let's see. Pang Yen uh, soon go up. Yeah, the, the, the Yen will go up soon, so please don't. We're looking at that as a structure. We will see when it's go up. Pang Chief, is it down correction? No, uh, the Pang Chief, yes, is correcting to the downside. Okay, I think, it, let me see one more question we can take. Uh, thank you for that. Somebody said thank you for the analysis. Thank you for that too. All the people are saying thank you. Why do I use different time frame in analysis? Because we look at different time frame wave structures. We looked at oil just now. Somebody wants, no, we can't. If we look at each chart individual, we'll have a six hour webinar. Okay, good afternoon. Sorry, I'm late. The question about how how you view charts and structure was picked up from this article, Mastering Elliott Wave. Uh, ah, that 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 was an uh, webinar I did with Exante. A lot of people saw that. Uh, what was the question? Let me see. This question was from there. You're telling about your methods and your story. You're recommending uh, people to go to ElliottWave.com. So why? So why you say you do not? You do you do not know what we are talking about? I am not sure what the question is. I recommend people to go to ElliottWave.com to read the book. It's free on ElliottWave.com. So I'm not sure what you mean by what we're talking about, Daniel. Well, if, I, if in any of my webinars I tell people to go to ElliottWave.com, I tell them to go to ElliottWave.com to get the book for free. That's the only reason I'll tell them to go there. I'm not advertising ElliottWave.com, so please don't, don't. Um, do we really have to care about the news? Uh, not that you don't have to care about the news, you simply don't have to trade it because you have no idea how the market will react to it. You should trade technically as a small trader. Do you study the time of the previous correction for anticipating time of the current correction? That is what we do all the time. Yes, the help, thank you. I'd love to attend an, an entire webinar about mindset and emotion. I think I, I will not be doing the webinar if I do one of that not mindset, the webinar will be not be based on mindset and emotion. It will be based on how to trade technically and don't get involved in, don't get your emotions high. Put it that way because I'm not a psychologist. I don't know how to deal with mindset and emotion. I could tell you how I trade technically so as not to create emotions in me. That is what I can do if, I, if, if, if we can look at it that way. Because then now next thing you know people say, oh, he's talking about mindset and emotion. No, I have no idea about that. Please. I can tell you how to trade technically and avoid having yourself emotionally in a coaster ride. That is what I can tell you, because I don't go in a, you know, a roller coaster ride when I'm trading. So we can do that if you guys are interested. How much time you spend in your family because the forex versus very strong? Oh, I work from home, so my family is just next to me all the time. No need my little kid. I have a little son here. He's always, I'm all, he sees me every couple hours, don't worry. <laughs> the, the rays that are sometimes in the MACD, are you looking for a certain size of impulse in the MACD? I have no idea what you're talking about there, Matt. That's not how we use the MACD. Any thoughts on silver? I just gave that. How do you handle spikes or breakouts uh, like we wait for a breakout to the corrective structure? But sometimes when it just spikes, it's normally in a news event, you can use an entry order for that. If you're trading at a breakout in an in in in, in an in a an, in a news event, you you definitely have to use an entry order, and hope that your luck is good. Uh, 
uh, no, we don't try to predict uh, the time frame in which the structure will complete. We look at the structure itself and it will tell us. We read into the structure when it's completing itself. Right? Our prediction is based on what the structure is doing. It's not that we look at the charts and we make a prediction and hope that it works. That's not what we're doing. We're not making predictions using a crystal ball. We read into the structure. We're looking at the type of structure that is, that is forming and we know what type of structures can be formed, right? If, if you give me one second, I'll give you, think about this. Here is a question to let you know what I'm talking about because I try this with my students. I want you to think about an apple. This is a question from Ensing, but everybody can think about it. I want you to think of an apple right now. And if I ask you to draw the apple, can you draw an apple for me? I'm pretty sure the answer would be yes from all of you because you know what an apple looks like, right? Now I want you to take a second and I want you to draw a carambola for me. If any one of you can draw a carambola for me, type a yes. I'm pretty sure none of you can do it. And you know why none of you can draw a carambola? Because you don't know what I'm talking about. It's the same thing with structures. Unless you understand what type of structures they are, how they look like, how to identify them in the chart, you cannot read them in the chart. You have no idea. It's like you're looking for a carambola in the chart, right? Because you can't find it. You don't know what it looks like. And for us, we are reading the charts like Apple because we know what it looks like. We can see it. We understand what it's doing. We have studied it. So unless you studied structure, unless you understand what type of structures make, unless you know how to identify those structures in the chart, you can, you can try all kinds of stuff. It's not going to work. And that is what we do in our, in, in our training courses. I train traders. I literally train them how to read structures. First, I don't tell them what the structures look like. They go and they learn it. Right? Then they come and I show them how to identify those structures in the chart. This is how we're going to identify this structure. This is how we identify this structure. And this is, this is how these structures behave. So once we know how to identify them and we know their behavioral patterns, we know how to trade it. It's like knowing a guy, you know the guy, and then you know his behavior pattern, right? You know what time he wakes up, what time he goes to work, what time he catches the buses, what time he goes to the park, what time he picks up his, 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 his groceries. You know everything about You can predict what he's going to do next week, right? Because you know his habits, you know his, 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 his pattern, you know what he does every day. Yeah. It's the same thing in the chart. It's nothing different. It's nature. It's the way it behaves. You know when you plant a seed, you know what type of tree is going to come out of there, right? I'm pretty sure if you take a seed and you plant it, you know what the tree would look like when it grows. Right? It's the same thing. It's nature. It's the way the patterns behave and they repeat themselves very, very often. 99% of the cells that read, they repeat themselves. We're lucky that 90% of the time we can identify it correctly. It's not, if we, if we didn't identify it, it doesn't mean that the pattern doesn't work. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It means I haven't identified it correctly. And sometimes it's difficult to identify. That's true. You're looking at the chart and you're like, what the hell is it? Which one of these three patterns is, 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 is forming right now? And then like, two days after you come back and it was none of the, those three patterns. It was a totally different pattern, but there was a pattern in there. It's just that you couldn't identify it. Now, I can go hindsight and show you a pattern that, that I missed totally in this chart. And any novice trader now look hindsight at this and say, how the hell did you miss this corrective structure? All my traders could look at this and say, wow, you just missed a nice, very nice flat for a cell setup. See that? But that's hindsight. While I was looking at the chart, it was looking like this. I was looking at this pattern here. You see the break of this? And the break of this normally goes up. But instead of going up, it formed a flat and then dropped. Now, I don't want to go into the details of this because people are going to say, oh, you're taking hindsight, right? I saw it afterwards, but I didn't. I tried not to tell you about it because I don't want people accusing me of saying, oh, you see everything hindsight. No, I saw it. When I saw it, it was too late, right? But because what I was looking for was a break of this, this here. You see this entire move that broke? When they broke that move, they should go up. But instead of going up, what they did is they made a flat. They went sideways. And I saw it one too late. It was only when they break the structure here that I was like, darn, I should have put an entry order at the bottom there. Right? But that's too late. That's gone. You can't trade that, right? 
But you can see that the structure was there. It's just that it was my inability to identify it because I had a, I had a little slight bias in me that this one should go up, right, and then come down, right? I was looking for a much deeper upside, but instead of making it that much deeper upside, all they made was a very small flat. I think even you can see it right now. And then they drop off of that for the next leg. So this is one leg in the, in the pattern. This is a flat, and this is another leg in the pattern. We know that pattern. All of us, all my traders, even the very new traders, know that pattern and they guided by it. But in the heat of the moment, I missed it. And that happens. You see, that's trading. Because my, so, my mind was so set on that upside that I forget to look at whether it's making a flat or not and missed it. Totally missed it. So it's not because the patterns don't, don't, are not there and they don't behave the same way. It's just my fault. Human beings, we, we missed it. And that's what I train my traders to do day in, day out. If this was a quiet market, let me show you what it would have done. If it was a quiet market, it, was new. it would have come and break this low. It would have consolidated here, and I would not have missed it. I would have been in that trade to the downside. But because it happened so fast, I had no opportunity. So gone, no big deal. So, good question, by the way. See, when you ask good question, you get good answers. Uh, how do you predict? So, that's for the prediction. Is there a current high uh, the euro USD is going to do? Yes, I think they're going to break that A wave high. If you look at the very start of the webinar, you can watch a recording. I, I identify what I think they're likely going to do. They're going to go so sideways for a while, and then I think they're going to go up. Mm. A lot of thank you. Thank you for all the thank you guys. I'm not going to read all the thank you. There's no need for that. Uh, correlation, taking correlation. Correlation is real. The USD is 100 per square foot. Oh, well, uh, somebody is telling me that I'm um, talking of correlation. This is the person say correlation is real. The USD is 100 per percent correlated to the Euro HKD. I have no idea what that is, but I believe you. Go ahead, trade your correlation. I can't say anything about that because I have no knowledge of what that, whatever that other um, product is, I have no idea. Maybe some currency, I don't know it. Don't uh, forget trade room. Mm, oh, at the end, that will be at the end. I'll leave a couple minutes for that. Hello, will you use join me in the next webinar? No, I'll probably use the same platform because I paid for it already. Uh, do we start from Monday charts for the analysis if we are in intraday trading? You can start anytime. You can do the analysis on any. It's not the, the time frame, it is a structure. Okay, I think we'll call it a day there because there are many more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And yes, a lot of thank you. One or two questions I probably missed, so I'll just skip them. So for those of you who are interested in the trading course, you can stick around. The rest of the traders, if you're not interested, let me don't bore you. You can actually go. I'll just explain to these traders very fast what the trading course is and what we do and how we do. So I'll give everybody like a minute. Who doesn't want to hear that? Who don't want to hear my advertisement to leave? Uh, thanks, Rudik. Do you take any question as criticism in any way or you're going? No, no, I don't. It's not. It's here's here's the thing, um, uh, Daniel. I'm not taking a question as criticism. I'm not looking at criticism. What I'm saying is that I don't like people to say. I don't tell people, "Hey, you said this," unless it's a quote and I'm absolutely sure about it. Right? I never do that. I never go in anybody's chart and trading view and make a comment. Never, ever, never. I did it twice, and both times. What, it, it was it, one time was humorous. The person didn't get the humor. The second time was just to correct something they were discussing about my chart. So those are the only two times. So you will never find me trolling anybody's chart because if I don't go to people's chart to comment, I'm going to have I'm it's going to be harsh. People are going to come on me very hard. So I don't avoid doing it. When people come on my charts or in the webinar and they're accusing me of things that I don't say or I haven't ever done, I'm like. Please, you know, rephrase the question in some nice way. That is what I think. If I go to somebody webinar and want to, want to ask them a question, I'll try my best to rephrase the question in such a way that it's, a nice, it's very nice to them because I'm in their space. It's either I don't like it, I leave the space, or I ask a very good one.
I, I now, now you're getting, you see, you, you, the, the, the world, the earth was, it was considered to be flat. I know that that's something I know it's wrong. So what's the point in that? I'm not sure what point you're trying to make. No, no, I'm not taking your questions as criticisms. So don't, don't feel anything. It's just that I, I didn't get what you're trying to say in the question. To understand my methodology, there's only one way you can do that. I'm not selling you anything. There's only one way you can, you can take the course. Believe me, if you go for the next two years following me and listening to these webinars and going to all my charts, you will never get my methodology. It's not possible to do. I'm training traders in my room for months, and some of them take a couple months to grab the concept, although I'm training them, literally teaching them the concept and training them. And they're there in my room all the time. And it takes a while to grab the concept. Why do you think in one or two of my free webinars you're going to get the concept when I am not even teaching it? All your traders are trading you, and is that the charting platform you use? No, my traders don't. They don't post on Trading View. They don't comment on Trading View. They only like my charts. Because if I have 200 plus traders and they start commenting, that's you know they, they will make a few comments if I ask them to do it because of the system Trading you View used to count. You have to have comments at the bottom there, and it's. I don't want to even go into that. But no, they they're not going to be making a lot of comments. Then don't worry. Oh, you don't have to buy it. You absolutely don't have to buy it. Believe me, I'm not trying to sell you my course. And that's the last thing you you, you would probably believe, but that's the truth. You can buy it or don't. I really don't care. I'm honestly about it. You can ask. May, there may be people in this room who I've told not to take the course because they're either not ready for it or they're financially not ready for it. I mean, in terms of experience or finance, two things you have to have to take it. Okay, the, everybody who is interested in the course are here, so let me go through it very fast and tell you what the course is. I did it a few times, but I'll tell you. Basically, this is what we do. We have a trading room on Slack. We have a, uh, on Slack, we have a group on Slack that is there, and Slack, if any one of you knows it, you know it has a lot of channels and all of that, so we do everything. We put everything we do in our trading room and in our webinars and so here, and it's a discussion site where we have everything. Slack, when you, when you join me, I add you to this room. All the information you need to know about us is in here, in this space, right? Everything. For our webinars, we have two daily webinars. That is 8 a.m. New York and 8 a.m. London. Those are the two times that I do update on the charts. That is what my webinar is, not like this one. That is literally, I do update in the charts, I identify trades, and if the trades are valid, we take the trades. Okay, those who are in the room, you can you can leave. Yeah, you don't have to stay. My traders could go basically. You don't have to. I'm just explaining to these guys how we do our thing. But you can stick around if you just want to for the fun, right? That is the that is two webinars. We also have courses that happens during you know for a six weeks period. When if you want to know more about the timing of the course and how it runs, you'll have to add me to Skype to get that right. So when you add me to Skype, it's going to be my Skype is type. M A N G A L four five seven. Add me to Skype and I'll give you info about the course and how it runs. How it runs is simple. It's training sessions. I do these classes on this platform like I'm doing here, and I show you how I do it. And then after that, we break up the groups into smaller groups, and you have training sessions in them. These training sessions are a different time of the day. So one of these training sessions will suit you. Depends on where you live in the world and whether you're working or not. And you can go into these sessions when they're happening and you can train. You will get practice, you will get to show your charts. The person who's running the training session will correct you. And after all of this, you come back with me here and you do a training session in this space with me, right? All of you get about 30 minutes to do your, your charts with me, about 30 minutes to do your charts with me so I can see what you're doing and correct it, right? 15, 20, 30 minutes, depends how fast you can do it. So we can do that for a whole week with you until everybody does. What I normally do is I do it for a whole day, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. With two breaks, I sit down and I do this with traders so that I can look at everybody's chart and correct what they're doing. 
right? So it's a training session. Out of the six weeks, four weeks is training. Four weeks is training, two weeks is theory, right? So that's how intensive the training is. That is not all. When you finish there, you can go into our 24-5, I think I should say 24-7 training room because you can use it Saturday and Sunday to train. If you have a free time, you can go in, call, invite more traders. They will come in in that room. It's like a webinar room. It's join me. You go in and you train. You take a chart and you practice, practice, practice until you're tired and then you go and people come in and they do that, right? So it's like a 24-7 room. If you have free time, you can open the room and start a train basically, right? So it's a lot of training. And then the trading room is where these guys go in a trade. When I identify the trades in the session that I see in the webinars, they go into the trading room and they wait for that setup to play out. They have the strategy, they know what strategy we use, and they use those strategy to trade. Basically, that is what it is. Nothing big, nothing fancy. I don't like to hype it. I don't like to advertise it. We're not taking in any more traders for this course. There's an ongoing course and it's packed. It's really filled. We already have traders who are signing up for the September course. This is our room work. You can sign up anytime and you can join us anytime you wish to. If you join us now, you will have access to the webinars. You will have access to the trading room. Webinars, trading room, you will have access to the class recordings that you miss. If there is an ongoing class, you can join it, but you will not get the practical sessions. These smaller rooms practicals, you will not get them. Because only the people who are actively taking this course get into that. When your time comes in September, you get to repeat all of this in the classes, as well as you get to go in and show your practice how you have done it. So from now to September, you have enough time to practice and train. So when your training session comes up, you can fine tune the little piece, bits and pieces you're missing, right? The person who's training is gonna help you to set those little piece, bits and pieces in a thing, and when you come to do it with me, if I see that you're having a problem, I'll help you. If you do it great, wonderful. And you'll have enough time to learn. So it's a never ending process if you want to become a good trader. That's how it works, right? Nothing fancy, nothing, not, no, no, no big hype here and you know, we're not, we don't have a war room, we don't have anything like that. We just train you and we're simple traders, right? We call it a trade co training course because that is what we do, we train you, nothing else. No big fancy name and no hype. My sense of humor somewhere really gets at me sometimes, right? I like to say things and then people say, oh, well, he's criticizing that person, not really. Let's go. Do you keep recordings of your sessions? Everything is recorded and you will have access to all the recordings. You will know what is Slack when you join us. It's, it's, a, chat, it's a chat space. The cost is 2500 for a lifetime access. Once you join us, you will not lose access to the room. You're only paying for the course. Let me make this very clear. You're paying only for the course. It's non-refundable. You're paying only for the course. The rest of it, you get access out of generosity. And if you maintain good decency in the room, you stay in the room. But if, you, if you're going to do anything wrong, you'll be warned. And if you repeat it, you'll be out of the room. We will not accept people in our room who have their own rooms. If you have your own training room, trading room somewhere else, you want to learn my course, buy the course and you leave. You, you're not supposed to be in the room and be doing your own thing. Because, you know, it's, it's morally and ethically not right. Yes, if you join now, you have that access. But if you wait until August and it's not filled and you join, then you will have one month. By August, I think it should be filled because it's already filling up. Basically. People are joining every day. Let me put it that way. So by August we'll get the the loom the the, the the amount of people in those training practical sessions are limited. So we can only take so much people because we don't train people in big groups. We train them in small groups of ten, twelve. So it's limited amount of people we can take to train. But people join us and they join us and then they take the next course. I just said it's two thousand five. Somebody is asking, 2,500 US dollars for a lifetime access. September has a lot of spot left because I'm not actively, we have only about 10 people for the September. There's a lot of place for September. 
No, it's better if you save it and then pay it. I don't have a way to track payments, so I take in one single payment and that's it. Once you're in the course, I don't have to bother you with payment anymore. The next course is in September. I don't have a website. Add me to Skype. No PayPal. Only bank transfer. It's a simple bank transfer. I think I've answered all the questions, right? Yep, I think all the questions are answered. All of you guys have got what you want to in terms of information. So I want to thank all of you for coming and see all of you, right? See all of you later. Uh, enjoy your weekend and I will catch up with you next week in TradingView. Take care. Thank you for your support. See you later. Bye-bye.